trying to get a little caffeine in the old system to go with these because let me tell you something. These little guys we're going over today, they are some bad motherfuckers. This is a winner. You guys, if you're in Provada Cigar Club, are probably familiar with these because these were two test blends that you guys voted on quite a while back. Some Paul Stulak cigars, and we'll, we'll dig into the details on these in a bit and how you guys are dead wrong, by the way, or at least the majority of you guys are wrong. <laughs> We'll, we'll go into that in a minute though. But before we get going on the cigars that we're gonna talk about today, we need to take a minute to talk about how you can get these. These are not in the normal Pravada bundles. You can't get these by being a member of Pravada. You can't get these by mail. You can't order these online. These are special cigars that are in a new thing. This is a new subsidiary of Pravada Cigar Club, the LCA. I know what you're thinking, just what we need in our life, another fucking acronym. <laughs> I agree, there's too many. I can't keep track of all this shit. But the LCA stands for the Limited Cigar Association. I'm pretty sure that limited, that's it, that's what it is. What the Limited Cigar Association is, it is not a club, it is not a membership, there is no fee to be involved with the Limited Cigar Association. It's a company that Brian put together uh, where he's trying to help infuse some life back into local cigar culture, cigar brick and mortars, local mom and pop shops. In today's world where online shopping is becoming more and more prevalent, and especially with this COVID thing that's happened recently, uh, that's really drove more sales online. This is Brian's way to help try to infuse some life back into those guys, try to give back to the culture. Because honestly, like, don't get me wrong, I love smoking a cigar by myself as much as the next guy. After a long day, sitting down by yourself with a book, or with a nice show on Netflix, or with whatever, or you know, some music, and a nice pour of some whiskey, and just relaxing by yourself, that's fantastic. But the other side of smoking cigars is the community behind it, right? Sitting and enjoying cigars with other people that enjoy cigars. I love sitting and smoking cigars with other cigar smokers. I'm just shooting the shit. One of my favorite things to do before the whole COVID thing happened was to you know, have a big cookout on the weekend, have my friends over on a nice afternoon, you sit out on the back porch, grill some food, smoke some cigars, drink some whiskey, fantastic. And having these local shops and tobacconists and cigar bars to go to, I think is an important part of the cigar culture. You know, they have events at these places. Uh, I've gone to several, at a couple local shops, and I think it's a big part of the culture that we need to make sure we don't let die, right? And Brian feels the same way, and that's why he's doing this. So what the LCA is, every single month, there is going to be, normally I think it's just going to be one cigar. This month, it's a, it's a, a twofer. It's a double, a little double doozy. But every month there is going to be a very rare special cigar that is released to the LCA and they're sending these out only to local shops. And they're local shops that have to be in the Limited Cigar Association. They're gonna be a limited amount of these and you're only gonna be able to get them at LCA shops. I think right now they're doing 100 per shop. How you get notified about when these cigars release and what your local LCA is. One, if you've ever purchased anything from Pravada, so if you've ever bought a cigar from their online store, if you were ever a member of Provada Cigar Club, or if you're a member of Farm Rolled, any of these things, you're in their database. And if you're in their database, you will get a monthly email letting you know what the cigar is, when it's gonna be released, and what your local shop is. If you're not in their database, because you've never done business with Provada, you can go sign up for their uh, Farm Rolled, you could go buy just a single cigar from their online store, so that way you're in their database, or, if you don't want to spend any money, you could just email Clark at Pravada Cigar Club and he can just put you in the database so that you can, you know, be notified when the releases happen, what cigars are going to be, and let you know what your local store is. That's how you get notified. But what you can do to help the LCA grow, if you have a local cigar store that you're a big fan of and you're close with the people that own the place or work there and you want them to be a part or know about this, Go in there and tell them. Tell them what the LCA is. Explain it to them. Give them the email, clark at pravadacigarclub.com and uh, tell them to contact Clark and he will look into getting them into the LCA. I appreciate people that look out for small businesses. In a world of Amazons and Walmarts and stuff like that, I think it, it's important to support small business and kudos to Brian for you know helping infuse a little life into these. They're only getting 100 of these cigars 
per store. So it's not like the sale of 100 of these cigars is going to make a local cigar shop's month, <laughs> right? But what the hope is, is you're bringing new people into the shop. When you're in there getting one of these, maybe you'll buy, pick up a few other cigars. You'll patronize that store. You'll find a new store maybe you didn't know about uh, and start going in there. Maybe you'll see a, a handout on the wall where they're doing an event that weekend and you'll go back for the event. So it's all in the spirit of spreading cigar culture, infusing some life back into local cigar shops and uh, helping grow the community, which huge props to Brian, huge props. I haven't even lit my damn cigar yet. So I'm gonna light this one up real quick. I've been talking and I haven't had anything to smoke, which is a bummer. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I know I say this every time we do a video. Uh, you guys have been asking, we'll talk about this at the end of the video because there's some other announcements for some merch and stuff that we'll, we'll give toward the end of the video. So we'll get into that. We got a cigar, I told you what the LCA is. And the reason we had to explain the LCA is because the only way you're gonna be able to get these beauties we're gonna talk about today is by going to your local LCA. That's where these guys are being released. You are not going to You're not gonna be able to get them any other way. What cigars are we looking at today? Where did I put my notes on these guys? There it is. God damn, that's a good cigar. I will say right here in the very beginning, if you don't like full flavored cigars, you're not gonna like these. These are some of the fullest flavored cigars I've had in a while. I mean, these things are packed full of flavor and they, they got a little punch on them. They got a little ass on them. Oh girl got a little surprise for you. They got a little, little something something. So what are we looking at? These are two cigars, Limited Cigar Association releases by Pravada Cigar Club or by the Limited Cigar Association. How does that work? Is it by Pravada? But I mean, these were, Anyway, these were some Paul Stew-like blends that you guys voted on a while, a while back. I think they were like called like Blend 25 and 26. I can't remember. It was a while back. You guys voted, and the one that won is this one right here. El Nuevo Comienzo. Fucking nailed that one. I nailed that one. I'm telling you. I nailed it. El Nuevo Comienzo. Fight me. You know that was perfect. <laughs> I'm just so horrible at pronouncing, I get a little overexcited if I think I pronounce something correct. The El Nuevo Comienzo, the Paul Stulek Exclusiva. For right now, you can only get through the LCA. Eventually, this will be put into full production and you're gonna be able to get this cigar elsewhere. Right now, you can only get it by this limited drop of the LCA. The Pravada Limitada by Paul Stulak. It's still a um, El Comienzo Nuevo, or El Nuevo Comien, El Coen, now I'm fucking it up, see I, <laughs> I had it. El Nuevo Comienzo, which translates to a new beginning, right? Yes, a new beginning. The Pravada Limitada is the blend of the two that did not win back when you guys voted on these. And while I said earlier, you guys are wrong, out of the two, I like the one that lost better. Now, supposedly, I don't remember because I think this might have been before I was uh, friends with Brian and before I was working with Pravada Cigar Club, but supposedly it was a narrow margin, which is why they decided to ended up making both of these. The majority of you guys that vote for this one, you guys are wrong. I'm sorry, you're just, you're just wrong. <laughs> I love saying that when it's completely opinion and there is no right and wrong. <laughs> it's really fun just to be like, yeah, your opinion is wrong and invalid. <laughs> no, they're both fantastic cigars. I understand why it was such a tight race, but personally, spoiler alert, I actually do prefer the Pravada Limitada of the two by a little bit. Let's go in to what these cigars are. That was some good espresso. Now it's time to, a little warm up whiskey. I'm gonna warm up with a little, with a little Woodford double oaked because this is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. First, the Paul Stulak Exclusiva. So this is the one that won the vote. Paul Stulak, by the way, a Canadian. Canadians are, are just fucking killing it right now, by the way. Like half the really awesome YouTubers out there that I know right now, all Canadian dudes, one of the best cigars I've had lately, Paul Stulak, blended by a Canadian dude. 
Canadian guys are fucking crushing it right now, crushing it. So real quick, before we dig into this, let me just go over the stats of this cigar real quick. This is an El Nuevo Comienza, Paul Stulak Exclusiva. You're looking at a five and a half by 54 Robusto with a soft box press. It is a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper with a Corojo 99 binder and Nicaraguan filler. Can I just say it hurt my soul that I like this one more than this one? because this has Connecticut Broadleaf Wrapper. I love Connecticut Broadleaf Wrapper. When Brian told me about these, I was like, oh, well, fuck, this is gonna be the one that I'm, I'm gonna like because it's Connecticut Broadleaf. I was super surprised when I actually preferred this one a little bit. And can I just say that it's just a good looking cigar. And I know I say this all the time, but man, this looks like some Sistine Chapel ceiling shit going on with the art on this thing. I think there's like, is that an angel? Is that an angel and a devil fighting? Or is that just an angel? It's like the angel's trying to get away from the other person. <laughs> no means no, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful artwork, gold foil to make it look super fancy. They've even got the, uh, on the, the cellophane's even got some gold writing. You don't see that very often, but the, it says El Nuevo Comienza Pulse Dulec Exclusiva in, in gold on the wrap. I mean, it's just a good looking cigar. Got a black band, and I mean, you guys know, I'm a fan of black and gold. And this cigar has got a lot of black and gold. Hell of a good looking cigar. But if I said it once, I've said it a million times. Doesn't matter what it looks like, it tastes like a turd. I'm talking and let my shit go out. Now the one I'm smoking here today is the, the second one. We're gonna go over in a minute. So let me just hit my smoking notes on the Paul Stulak Exclusiva. On the first third, on light up, pepper spice. Almost lip tingling, immediate pepper hit, immediate. I mean the pepper in this thing was like, Smack you in the mouth. What is the five fingers? Say to the face. <laughs> Slap. That thing had some oomph on it. Almost had a, almost like a menthol sensation because my lips were almost a little tingly. Smack of pepper on this guy right off the rip. Let you know it was there. Once it warms up, still getting a little tingle on the lips, almost menthol sensation. Full flavor, spicy earth, and a little bit of that broadleaf underlying sweetness. Still some black coffee, maybe a bit of dark chocolate or cocoa nibs. Now, when I say cocoa nibs, I'm not saying that to sound like a pretentious shithead. <laughs> cocoa nibs have a very distinct flavor to them. They're, they're different. It's a cocoa flavor, but there's no sweetness there. It's got some bite, some bitterness, some black coffee kind of situation. All those things kind of fall into the same category in my book. Getting where I'm going with this, spicy, coffee, earth, all the dark, rich flavors with just a little bit of sweetness. Honestly, there's so much spice and like boldness in this cigar, the broadleaf sweetness that I normally get in broadleaf wasn't coming through as much as I get oftentimes in broadleafs. Second third, keeps the full flavor going, still spicy, but a little less intense. Pepper, earth, bready flavor starts up. Coffee, but a bit more creamy flavor. Still getting some dark chocolate flavors with a nice sweetness on the finish. Spicy, charred oak retro. So in the second third, I remember this cigar really kind of came to life for me. The first third, it was super, super bold and almost to the point to where it was a little one-sided on the spiciness in my opinion. During the second third, everything kind of really came together for me. It smoothed out. The spiciness kind of came down just a little bit. The sweetness came up a little bit. So it became a little more balanced. The retro I was getting a nice charred oak kind of thing going on. And I was still getting a lot of those earth and coffee flavors that I, well, happen to love because, well, you know, I'm always drinking coffee and stuff. Last third, sweetness continues to come out more as it burns down. Sweet honey wheat bread, earth still kicking, spice on the lips, pepper flavor diminishes just a little though. Creamy coffee, dark chocolate, plenty of spice, and I'm getting a very fresh ground coffee vibe. So I remember distinctly in the last third of this one, the coffee kind of teeter totter between, at moments it, it was because the smoke in this cigar was very creamy after I got into it a little bit. So it was kind of reminded me of a coffee with cream because it was kind of a subtle uh, creamier coffee kind of flavor. But then there were bursts of something that reminded me of fresh ground coffee. Very distinct flavor of fresh ground coffee. So it was interesting because it was kind of ping ponging back and forth between I'm like, no, that's more of a creamy coffee note. And then the next puff was like, oh no, that's like fresh ground coffee kind of note. It's a really interesting 
full flavor, enjoyable cigar. And I'll tell you something else this cigar did that kind of surprised me. I smoke a lot of cigars. I've talked about it before. I smoke at least two cigars a day, every single day, usually three or four. Before that, I was a cigarette smoker uh, back in the day. I haven't smoked in years and years, but I used to be a cigarette smoker. I dipped. I'm no stranger to nicotine is where I'm going with this. And this cigar, I don't know if it was the day or maybe I hadn't eaten enough, but this one actually, I could feel the nicotine rush a little bit. I was getting a little warm in the face, felt a little jittery. I was like, ooh, man, some nicotine flowing in this one. Ate a little something, went right away, I felt fine. But that rarely happens to me in a cigar. I mean, rarely happens. Like I said, it could have been a weird thing where my blood sugar was low that day because I hadn't eaten, who knows. But definitely a full flavor, full on cigar. I thought it was a fantastic cigar. I definitely understand why you guys voted for that one. However, the reason I say I think you're wrong is because as much as I love that cigar, as much as I think it's great, because it is great. I don't think it's as good as this one. But now this one they're calling the Pravada Limitada. Now this one, you probably will never be able to get again. So if you're interested in getting this cigar, I would definitely find out what your local LCA is and go out and grab one of these guys because while the Paul Stulek Exclusiva is going to eventually be a production cigar, this was the one that lost. So this one, there's no plans for this to go into production. Who knows if they'll ever do another run of these. Very likely this might be the only time you'll ever see this cigar. So I definitely suggest you try to go out to your local LCA and grab one of these because I actually think this is the better of the two. Now the difference, five by 54 instead of five and a half by 54, so we're a half inch shorter, still a soft box press. This one, however, has a San Andres, San Andres, I always fuck this up. I always say San Andreas and it's not San Andreas. I think that was Grand Theft Auto. Okay, so I nailed the El, Co El Nuevo Comienzo. So you forgive me on the San and San Andres. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. It has got a Habano 2000 binder, which that name always cracks me up. It reminds me of Andre 3000. Isn't that his name? Habano 2000. I mean, what the hell with the 2000? And it's got Nicaraguan filler. So you get a different binder and a different wrapper. I will say these blends are very similar. Even though one is a Mexican San Andreas wrapper and the other one is a Connecticut Broadleaf. This is a Habano binder. This is a Corojo. There are a lot of similar veins in these cigars. You're getting a lot of the same flavors. Man, that's good. Let's get a little bit of this. Man, if you don't like Woodford Double Oaked, I don't think we can be friends. That stuff is like, I go back and forth between, it depending on what I'm drinking it with, I get straight maple pancakes sometimes. Other times, like with this cigar, I just get this very, chocolatey flavor. I still get a little bit of that maple kind of vibe going on, but overwhelming chocolate flavor comes out of this, drinking it with a cigar like this. Just a chocolate bomb, so good. Mm, man. So on this one, on the first third, pepper, not the flavor, but a little bit of spice, plenty of it. Not as much tingle as the other blend. Plenty of earth on this one. Seems like the chocolate is a little more even with the spice. Not getting overpowered by the spice as much in this blend. Definitely some coffee, but seems more like coffee with cream than black coffee as the first blend. Retro, nice spice. This cigar, even though I'm getting a lot of the same notes, your chocolates, your coffees, your, your earth, to me, more balanced than the other blend. The other blend, especially in the first third, the spice was so overwhelming, that was the predominant flavor. And this one right off the rip, it was more nuanced. The spice was there, but it was giving the chocolatey flavors a lot more room to breathe and they were coming through a lot better. Again, I'm, I'm kinda, they were close, don't get me wrong, but you know, to each his own, everybody likes different things. Second third, chocolate, coffee, earth, spice. This one seems a little more balanced, nuanced, smoothed out a bit, but still full flavored for sure. Maybe a little bready, creeping in, finishes sweet and creamy. Coffee, definitely more cream than black, retro spicy oak note. So see, a lot of these are very, it's almost the exact same notes I was getting in the first cigar. I'm getting the coffees and the breadiness coming in the second third. So, I mean, they're very similar smoking experiences. To me, the main difference between these two, let me go ahead and give you how it finished out before I go into that. So the last third, still chocolate, coffee, earth spice, but now a nice floral note 
coming in pretty strong. Otherwise, very much similar to the second third, great cigar. This one in the, in the last third, I did start to get a bit of a floral note that I remembered coming in pretty strong. It was like a sweet floral note that was coming in. A lot of your darker wrapper cigars or cigars in general, you're gonna get earth. You're gonna get leather. You're gonna get chocolate or coffee. You know, you hear a lot of these flavor uh, notes mentioned when you're describing a lot of cigars, right? And that's because a lot of cigars have some similar veins. The main difference in these two cigars to me was Provada Limitada is a little more nuanced. It's a little softer. It wasn't quite as punchy in your face. Still very full flavored, don't get me wrong. I just feel like the flavors were a little more balanced, a little more nuanced. The flavors were coming through a little easier. The first one with the broadleaf, the spice was a little more overwhelming to where it wasn't giving some of the other flavors as, flavors as much room to breathe. So I feel like this one was a little more nuanced. That being said though, you heard the flavors in both of them. They're almost identical. So, I mean, both very enjoyable. Both just clouds of creamy smoke too. Very creamy. Retro on both of these, a little spicy on the retro, both of these. This is not one you wanna really get after. You wanna take it easy on the retro. As for pairings, I think either one of these would go really well with a nice espresso. There's lots of chocolates and stuff in both of these that would hold up very well to both of these cigars. If you're smoking it in the evening with a beverage. Hey, careful, man, there's a beverage here, huh? This wood for double oaked is going fantastic with this Pravada Limitada. Pravada Limitada. I feel like I'm saying Acuna Matata. <laughs> Acuna Matata, Pravada Limitada, right? Yeah. The Woodford definitely goes really well. With the first one, because of the fact that I think the first one is even a little stronger, more full than, than the Pravada Limitada, the uh, Paul Stulek Exclusiva, perfect opportunity to drink a barrel-proof whiskey. If you're afraid that your cigar is gonna get washed away by the strength of a barrel-proof, this uh, El Nuevo Comienzo Paul Stulek Exclusiva, perfect cigar. That cigar would hold up to any whiskey I've ever had in my life plenty of flavor there to push through. You know, it's funny in my notes, mm. I didn't list any leather in either one of these. And the reason I, I bring up leather is I was actually watching a Pravada video from earlier. By the way, if you guys have never checked out Pravada's YouTube channel, definitely check that out. Brian and the guys over there have really put a lot of work into the videos. Man, they put out some good stuff. I'm really impressed with some of the content those guys put out over there and uh, really, Excellent stuff. He was doing one on how we talk about leather in cigars all the time. And he was comparing some leather. He had some leather samples and he was actually saying that he always says leather in cigars, but he was sniffing a leather and comparing it to the cigar and it, it wasn't quite the same thing, right? It wasn't, he was saying that maybe his memory of leather and what he said he'd gotten leather and cigars wasn't quite accurate because it wasn't matching the leather samples that he was smelling. And I actually texted him, I'm like, you know, when I say leather in a cigar, what it reminds me of, when I was a kid, we actually had horses and we had some uh, stables across the street and horses and whatnot. And the leather, when I think of leather, it always reminds me of the leather saddles. It was a mix of leather smell with a little bit of that barnyard kind of vibe because there was horses and, you know, the, the horse stable situation, along with, you know, the saddle soap and the Neats foot oil and stuff we used to treat the saddles with to keep them in good shape. All that combined is kind of what I think of when I think of leather. I don't have any of that to smell currently to compare to a cigar to see if that's the note that I'm getting, but I don't think of just straight leather. I specifically think of like a leather saddle when I was riding horses, which kind of mixes in that earthy barn with leather, along with some Neats foot oil and saddle soap. That's extremely specific, I know. But you know, it's interesting because when you're talking about flavor notes in cigars, there is no wrong answer. I hear some people say, oh, well that's, that's pretentious or that's not, there's no wrong answer there really, right? Because obviously there's no chocolate in the cigar. There's no leather, there's none of that in the cigar. So when you're pulling these flavors out and the guys at uh, Whiskey Vault have talked about this before, it's just your mind making connections of your memory of a smell or a flavor with something that's connecting in the thing you're tasting. The same with whiskey. There's no chocolate <laughs> in this Woodford Double Oak. But in my brain, when I taste that, it's saying, obviously whiskey, but chocolate. There's something in there that my brain is connecting to the flavor of chocolate. It was interesting, I did it the other day. I had a, it was a La Aurora, I think it was a La Aurora cigar. And that damn wrapper smelled just like chocolate. 
the nose on that cigar was chocolate bark. So much so that I, I had my wife who is not a cigar smoker. And I was like, does this not smell like chocolate to you? And she even said, yeah, it does. And I was over at my parents' house and I asked my mom, I said, does this smell like chocolate to you? And she's like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> so I actually got out a chocolate, a piece of dark chocolate, had her smell that, and then I had her smell the cigar. And she said, well, I see where you would say, I do smell that in there. That cigar doesn't smell exactly like that chocolate, but I could definitely smell the chocolate in the cigar. You see where I'm going? It's not always when people are saying that this tastes like chocolate or this tastes like honey wheat. It's not that it tastes exactly like that thing. It's that there is are nuances of that in there that are connecting to that flavor in your brain of what that is. Does that make any sense? I feel like I just rambled for at least a couple minutes about that and it probably maybe made no sense, but maybe it did and it helped some of you guys out with your <laughs> cigar tasting and whiskey tasting experiences. Really pleasant cigar. If you're into dark flavors, if you're into the earthy, spicy, chocolatey cigars, you're going to love these things. Love, love, love them. They are great cigars. Go out, find these at your local LCA, your Limited Cigar Association shop. Give them a little love. Go by, pick up a couple of these, help out your local small business, help the cigar community out. I think you'll really enjoy them. Okay, so I think we fully covered both of the excellent Paul Stulak limited drops that are going on. We've discussed the LCA. A little housekeeping before we go, just uh, kind of give you guys an update on the merch and what's going on. This is the way stealth all black, murdered out, whatever you want to call it. They're out on the website now through the end of the month. These are kind of, uh, I put these out in celebration of uh, Mandalorian season two is coming out. One of my favorite shows out there, love it. Season two is coming out on the 30th. So obviously this is the way with the cigar and the whiskey I, that was inspired from the Mandalorian. So I did an all black version in, uh, as a kind of a uh, homage to the, uh, the season two coming out this month. So these will only be available this month. If that's something you're interested, go snag them up. There is some new leaf and barrel stuff. There's a Leaf and Barrel version 2 hat and a version 2 shirt out coming out this week. And this is just a little sneak peek because I'll probably have to do something else about these. But this is something I've been working on for a while. Comes in this nice little walnut box. So you've seen a lot of guys do challenge coins, different things like that. On this channel, we're always talking about man stuff. We do it a little different over here on my channel. We didn't come out with a challenge coin. You've heard people say, like, if you do something bitchy, not so masculine, turn in your man card. Somebody asks you what you want, instead of ordering a whiskey, you order it truly. You know, turn in your man card. Well, the official man card. Let me see if I can get the thing to focus. There it is. Been working on this for several months now. It's my version of a challenge coin that I'm doing here. It is the official man card. We worked with a graphic artist friend of mine. He did the artwork for this. He actually designs uh, playing cards. And this is a solid block O brass. This is not coated, it is not plated. It is solid brass and it's hefty. Pretty excited about these, proud of these. We've worked on them for quite a while. These will be coming out some point this week. Uh, I'm gonna drop them. They are extremely limited numbers. Uh, we only did a limited run of them. Released two people on my Patreon first. Those guys are gonna get first stab, but then I will release them to the general public. I'll do like an Instagram post or something once they're actually released, but definitely check the site. I'll put a link below under the merch page. This is another super limited item. You guys have asked, and I'm, I'm bringing this up in the video because I've had many, many questions about this. This is another, this is a prototype of something I've been working on for months also. Won't go into too much detail because it's not ready yet. I'm gonna try to have it ready before Christmas so that anybody that wants one for a Christmas present, it will be available. Gonna be extremely limited because they weren't cheap to make, so they're not gonna be inexpensive, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but there's gonna be a limited run of these. This is a solid block of brass. We're not gonna go too much into it. We wanna leave a little, little, little anticipation for you guys that have asked, coming soon. Talking about patina, patina, patina. Solid brass, solid brass. You get where I'm going with all that. I've done the housekeeping, updated you guys on the merch. I think we covered everything. I think that's it. And I think this video is gonna be about an hour long. You guys are always saying you want longer videos. Well, you should have been able to smoke through pretty much an entire cigar during the video. The few of you guys out there that say, oh, why do you talk so much? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> because most of you guys tell me you want longer videos. If you ask, I do. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and got some good information out of it. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. Happy smokes and long ashes to all of you. We'll see you in the next video. Man, I didn't even make it to the Elijah Craig. I was drinking slow tonight. 
brought the Elijah Craig out in case we got through the Woodford, but I was talking so damn much I never finished the Woodford to get to the Elijah Craig. That, by the way, is the new B520. I only had a couple pours out of it, but really good. The B520 batch of the Elijah Craig Braille Blue. Very good.